All right, gonna show you a really good proof text proving the uh, changed life, the biblical scriptural doctrine of a changed life in the believer, in the saved Christian, okay? Now I wanna point first point out that the process of sanctification in the changed life can take time, okay? It won't be an overnight thing. It can take years of sanctification for certain sins to get out of your life. If, for example, if you're addicted to alcohol, if you're addicted to drugs, even if you're addicted to video games, you know? Uh, it can take years to get some of these sins out of your life, okay? With the sanctification of the Holy Ghost. But if you're saved, there will be a changed life, okay? It might not come, you know, very soon. It could take years, but it will come, okay? You won't have the same desires. And Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10 are a good proof on that, okay? Paul taught a change. I mean, Paul had a changed life. Paul was on the road to Damascus in Acts chapter 9, and he got saved. I mean, Jesus Christ... <clears throat> Sorry, <coughs> it's allergy season for me, I do apologize. But Jesus Christ appeared to him and Paul, you know, converted. He was he stopped killing Christians. He left the false religion of Judaism and came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross to pay for sins. And Jesus Christ used Paul to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. And Paul taught a changed life after salvation. I'm going to show you proof on that. And this is just one of the many proofs I could use. One of the many scriptures I, sorry, I could use. Sorry, I just had a big meal too. Sorry about that. One of the big scriptures I can use. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. Okay. I'm going to show you that. This is, really proves the scriptural doctrine of spiritual regeneration and a changed life after salvation. I want to point first point out that too. This is not to be saved or to stay saved. Like some of the Lordship salvation works righteous heretics will teach. Okay. The changed life is done by the Holy Ghost after your salvation, okay? It's not for salvation. So I want to kick that heresy too. You see, you have a false dichotomy. You have the easy believism heretics. You say there's no there's no changed life. You just believe and that's it. Then you have the other side, which is the lordship salvation, works righteous, self-righteous, false prophets who say that you have to, you have to be sinlessly perfect. You have to change your life to, to be saved. Both sides are equally false, okay? There's a middle ground which is biblical salvation. I'm going to show you that. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. And you have the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Look at verse 2. Wherein in time past you walked according to the counsel of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit now worketh in the children, and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Uh, verse 3. Among whom we also we had our conversation in times past. Okay. And the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, who were, who were, past tense, by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with, quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved. See, it's not faith alone, it's grace through faith. Okay? You cannot say it without God's grace. Okay? When you're saying faith alone, it's not a scripture. I mean, I understand people say faith alone, they mean grace through faith, but just the term faith alone, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like using it. I just don't think it's scriptural. Uh, the, the scriptural term would be grace. The scriptural biblical term would be grace through faith. Okay. Not faith alone because you have that God's grace, obviously. Verse six, who hath ra and hath raised us together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Okay, compare that to First Peter chapter one, verse three to five. You have inheritance. In, you have inheritance in he inheritance in heaven. Sorry, uh, incorruptible that fadeth not away. Okay, First Peter chapter one, verses three to five. Uh, your seed in heavenly places. Look at this, verse seven. That in ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his cut. What the? Oh, sorry about that. That in ages to come, he might show his exceeding riches and of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Now, here's where we get kicking the false work salvation, lordship salvation, false prophets. Uh, verse 8, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, it's a good thing here, because you have the top, verses 1 through 5, kicking the easy believers and heretics. Now you have verses 8 to 9, kicking the lordship salvation heretics. But look at verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Okay, little side note, Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, is clear that God basically made us for his pleasure. Okay, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Compare this over to Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. 
God would would uh, would uh, purify people unto Himself, or peculiar people unto Himself, as zealous of good works. Paraphrasing, of course. But you're created for good works. Okay, you. Uh, what does it say in verse two? Ye uh, in time past, you walked according to the counsel, the course of this world. Okay, that's a changed life. Okay, you're quickened. You're you were dead in trespassing the sins. You walked according to the count, the course of this world, but you were quickened by Jesus Christ. Your sins were forgiven, and now you're you know serving Jesus Christ. You're created for good works. It, it you're no longer walking according to the course of this world in time past. You know, in whom we had our conversation in who we have our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Okay, there's a change that comes in. Second uh, Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. So Paul teaches a changed life in Ephesians chapter two, verses one to ten. And like I said earlier, it's a good proof text because it kicks the easy believers and heretics, and it also kicks the works righteous, self righteous, lordship salvation heretics. So I wanted to show you guys that the changed life is a scriptural concept. Uh, when you get saved, there will be there will become a changed life. Okay, the the fornicator doesn't keep fornicating. The prostitute doesn't keep prostituting herself. The drug dealer doesn't keep dealing drugs. Okay, the uh, whoremonger doesn't keep you know being a whoremonger essentially. The drunkard doesn't keep you know heavily drinking. The uh, alcohol addicted person will break the addiction of alcohol, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, there's a changed life. Paul teaches that it is a scriptural concept. Okay, spiritual regeneration, the new birth. That's all it is. It's not not it's not not a false doctrine. It's not a heresy. It's not work salvation. It's biblical salvation. It's the results of biblical salvation. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.